thank you for um, tuning back in. You know, I'm always happy that y'all are trying to progress and make yourself better, but um, y'all know I don't like wasting time. So we're gonna go ahead and start with what we're talking about right now. Um, first, we're gonna, we're gonna build our way up, but there's some things that we have to make sure we understand before we can go on. First is the simple interest formula, right? And if you don't know, we're covering interest, simple and um, compound interest, but first we're going to knock out simple interest because this one is, as it's called, simple. All right, so here's your formula, I equals PRT. Now, some of y'all may remember that I said this formula is easy to remember if you don't have it because sometimes they won't give you your formula, but if they do give you your formula, if they don't give you your formula, sorry, if they don't give you your formula, you can remember this formula as I party, I party, right? So that's kind of the way that I remember the simple interest formula and maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't, but I equals PRT, that's I party. Um, and you just need to know what each one of these things, which each one of these are variables uh, equal. So first we have our I, which will be our actual our actual interest, right? P will be our, be our principal. And um, it says principal, but I also want you to understand that principal also just means, uh, you can look at it as two ways, two things you can look at it as, like the easy way to remember it is the money that you start with or you can call that your deposit. When you actually do the work, it'll ask you, it'll say deposit, it won't say, well it may say starts with, but most of the time it's going to tell you that such and such or this person or you deposit this amount of money. So that's what that number is going to be. Your R is going to be your rate. Your R is your rate, but there's another way that you can identify rate in a, a problem, and that is your rate is always your your rate is always your percent. So when you see it, you know, okay, well it says 70, 77 percent. Oh, that's the number that we're going to work with. It says seven percent, and there you go. There's your rate. Your rate is seven percent. Lastly is your T, which should. Um, be easy to understand what that one is. That is our time. That is the length of or the amount of time that we're going to be occurring simple interest. So first things first, we have to understand these words when we're reading these things in word problems. If you can't, if you don't know these words and you don't know what they are, knowing IPRT may not actually help you. So that's the first thing that we need to um, understand. Then it comes to the actual solving part of it. So let's say we started with, we'll, we'll make it easy. We're trying to find the uh, interest on, um, we started with $100, you deposit $100 and they give you a, um, I said seven earlier, so 7% interest rate, right? And we wanna know what is our interest going to be after two, two years. Two years, right? Now, I know this may look correct. It may look correct, but you gotta understand that this right here is not a number that we can work with. So we have to change this from this percent to a decimal. So if you don't already know how to change it from a decimal, uh, just remember we have 7% wherever your decimal is. So in this one digit number, we're just gonna move our decimal over two spots, one, two. So now our number has become, I'm gonna put X's now. And also erase that example. So that's what you have. Now you can solve this, uh, I have a calculator somewhere. And I want y'all to know something, because I know a lot of y'all didn't get to take y'all's calculators home, and some of y'all don't actually have the calculators that we use in class. Um, you can use a standard calculator, or a standard calculator, or you can use your phone, but you have to 
know exactly what you're doing or you can use like a computer uh, computers are a little bit easier to use when it comes to or at least when we move to compound interest you'll see why I'm just put, I'm just typing it in now so I'm going to put in 100 times and I'm going straight through 100 times point zero seven times so our interest has become $14, um, $14. To find the balance though, you have to take your principal plus your interest to get your balance. And this is an I, not a one, just so you know. So we're gonna take our 100, our 100 plus our 14, and our balance after two years, if we had this setup going on after two years, we'd make we have $114 in our bank account. Now, the example in your books or the example that we can use is a little bit different, but we're, going to, we're still solving for our simple interest. And we can also just, because we know how to do it now, we can go ahead and also solve for the balance. The way that we, the numbers that it says, it says you deposited $450 into account with an annual simple interest, uh, a simple interest rate of one and one half percent. Uh, calculate the account balance after six years. Now notice we have to find the balance on this problem. So it always helps that we have these things written out. We don't know our interest, but we do have these right here. We have our principal. It tells us what it is. And like I told you, it tells you that you deposited or you started with, what does it say? Um, you deposit, so yeah, it has deposit. It tells you what your interest rate is and it tells you the amount of time that it takes. So we're gonna take those numbers that we have and we're just gonna, we're gonna pick and plug, you know, plug in, right? So um, the principal was $450. We're gonna multiply that by our interest rate, which was, and I'm gonna write it this way so, don't be alarmed. One and a, uh, one and a half percent, and over six years time, right? Now remember what did I tell you about this right here? This percent we cannot work with this number. We're going to change this first. We're going to change this right here into a decimal. So we all know that one and a half is one point five or one and five tenths. So we have this now, but we're not done. We did change it to a decimal, but that's still one and a half percent. We have to change that by moving our decimal point. So I'm gonna show you, show you it here, and then I'm just gonna erase this stuff right here for you. And again, I'm gonna grab my phone and just type it in. Let's just type it in and see what we get. So our interest is $40.50, but it does not ask us for the interest. We're, all, we're looking for our balance. Now remember, for balance, B equals P plus I, right? P plus I, and then we can just check our numbers that we know. We knew that this was the B and this was our I, or we can put the P right there. And we're just gonna say 450 plus 40, and that is 490.5. There you go, and that's it. That was the balance, that's how much money this account would have um, after six years with one and a half, uh, uh, one and a half interest rate, one and a half percent interest rate, and it started with $450. After six years, this person would have $490. We've already done simple interest. So let's go ahead and jump over to compound interest. Um, it's not that much uh, more difficult but I do want to do the same thing we did here. We need to understand 
what each one of these is inside of our uh, compound interest formula. Our compound interest formula, in case you can't see here, I'm going to write it big here. Okay, so we have B equals P, open parentheses, 1 plus R, close parentheses to the N, uh, N to power. So what does each one of those things mean? We'll just take that really quickly. So when we did simple interest, to find out how much we had at the end, we solved, um, we did P plus I gives us B, which was our principal plus our interest giving us our balance. Now with this compound interest, we have, we're just automatically solving for our balance here. So we have P again being our principal, B being our balance of course, um, P being our principal, R is our rate over the number of periods per year. If that sounds confusing, what I want you to think about is if, it, if I told you that we did it monthly, like how many months are in a year? There are 12, right? So we're going to take whatever our interest rate is, let's say it was uh, 2%, we put uh, 0.2 over 12 because that's how many months are in a year. And it goes the same way, let's say if it was quarterly, how many quarters are in one year? There are four. There, so we have our 0 0.2 over 4 now. And the same thing comes down here. So with that same number, if we said go back to monthly over two years, we take that, this right here for our N, basically what I'm saying, like so for, and I'm using monthly as our example, and then I'll also use quarterly. Okay, so what I'm asking you when they say this, I'm asking you how many of these are in one year. So we know that this equals 12. This is going to compound 12 times in one year. And this is going to compound four times in one year. So we have our numbers of periods per year. That's what I'm talking about for our rate. So we're going to take our 2% that I said earlier over 12 or over 4 if it was monthly, if it was quarterly. If it was yearly, it'd be 1. Um, but for this part right here, for the end part, what I what you do need to do, like let's say it was two years, you have to take this number here and multiply it by our two years, making our end eight. This case up here for monthly, that would make our end 24, okay? So I'm gonna write out uh, problem. I'm sure you don't have the calculators that we have at school but I'm going to show you the way that you can do it without the calculator, just using your computer or, I'm not sure if the phones have this uh, habit, but if your phone does, you may be able to solve it on your phone as well. So let's say we were trying to find compound interest for someone who took that first example that we just used. I think it was $100. $100. Oh, and I skipped something I do want y'all to notice that this is a one right here and every time we're doing a compound interest formula it's always going to be one I think I should say it again this is always going to be one that is going to be one that number right there in this formula B equals P open parentheses that is always going to be one so please keep that in mind um, and we'll use seven I think it was seven percent and remember when we're dealing with percents we have to change that percent to a decimal so we can just go ahead and jump that over so our number here will be plus point zero seven and we're just going to say we're going to do it both ways so you can see what I'm talking about um, we'll do quarterly first so we'll just put our four there right that's because we have four quarters in one year. And then we can say for uh, two years, like we just did, because that makes sense to me. So over two years, so two times four is eight. This is what your problem should look like once you get all your information down. And your numbers, like I said, like I said earlier, your numbers are gonna be the same. Uh, your words are what, what are going to help you determine, like knowing the vocabulary. So it tells you your principal, it tells you your rate, and it tells you your time. Now you just have to know how to set it up. And this, based on what I had just said, deposit 107% uh, interest quarterly over um, two years. Those are things that you have to be able to understand to be able to do these problems. 
The next one, and this is how it would set up. Remember uh, PEMDAS? So let's make sure that we follow it accordingly. Um, we're gonna do inside our parentheses first. I don't have a calculator in my hand, but if I did, I'd put this together and don't, don't know what that is. Let's find out. Let me use my phone if it ever comes on. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a second. So after you solve this one first, so what I'm, what I'm actually telling you how to solve this using your phone or your computer, go ahead and do this part right here first. So put this into the calculator or into your whatever you, whatever device you're choosing to use. This is going to give you a number, and it should look something like this, and this will be a number, and this will be a number as well, and your decimal will go right there. And I hope this isn't too confusing. Um, anyway, my phone just came on. And then you're going to add that one. So now you will have this number here, and I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. So let me just type this in. I know the silence is weird, so I'm just gonna talk my way through it. I'm putting my code in. There's my calculator. So again, I'm going to just put this right here into my calculator on my phone. And that number was uh, 0 .00, well not 0 .00, 0 .0175. Now with that 175, I'm just going to add that 1 to it. So now our new formula will look something like this, right? Now the next step, what I was trying to say, say to you about solving this part, now we're going to move to our exponent here. If you just type this out into a regular calculator, you're not going to get the right uh, answer. You're going to get some E long number, but that's not going to be correct uh, because it's going to solve it this way, 100, then that, then that. I don't know why it's doing it, but hey. anyway, if you're not using the right calculator. So anyway, we're going to put this number right here in the way that I'm going to put that in. So I just showed you how we did this. So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this part right here into a cap in, onto the computer or into a calculator. I'm going to put that same number, that 1.0175, and I'm going to use this symbol right here Look at your keyboard or look at your phone, and if you can find this on there, that and then an eight, right? And that's gonna solve this whole, that part of that problem for us. And I know it's long, but if you don't have a computer, or you don't have a computer, I'm dumb. If you don't have the right calculator to do it, then you're, you're, you're just gonna be doing it wrong. And if you don't know how to use a calculator, because you know, if you know how to use a calculator, you'll actually be fine. So let's go ahead and type our number into this calculator if it'll let me. There we go. One, seven, five, and eight. And that gives us this equals one, one, four, eight, 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 one, seven, eight, two, nine, six. Can you see that long number? I don't know if you can even see me, but that's the number that we're going to be dealing with. And then from there, we're going to take this number here. And the last part is taking that and multiplying it by 100. And our final answer, our balance in our account would be $114.89. Now, I showed you, I broke it down into steps, but again, I say this, if you have the right kind of calculator to do this problem, do it. But if you don't, and you don't understand it, you can easily break these problems down into sections. Look what I did. I went one part, two part, and, well, you know, well, I already did that part. But one part to get this number here, and then I took that number, put it here, and then I had my answer. It was just two parts. A lot of times it's just about not being um, lazy in a sense, but you gotta just go ahead and do it, do it, do it, do it. Go ahead and do your work and you'll get the right answer. And there you have it right here. Any questions? If yes, that's what you ask them. Or you can email me, of course. Hmm. Yeah, that's all I got. So let's go ahead and do one more example. I'm not sure if I'm like hitting home, so I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do one more example. I'm gonna do the example that uh, was given to us. So 
I'm going to read it and then I'm going to put it on the board. But please listen to the words that I'm saying because you're going to hear these words here, the ones that I told you to listen for. Principle, rate, time, years, quarterly. You're going to hear that when I read this example. So hopefully when you get this part, it'll all, like me doing it again will make it make more sense. So let me read this thing. Suppose you deposit $575 in a savings account for three years. The annual interest rate is 1.2% compounded quarterly so you see we hear the words that we're talking about what is the total interest earned this is another key part it's not telling us for the balance it wants to tell it wants the total interest earned and i'll show you how to solve that once we get to that point point but we know our formula what was our our principle it says you deposit it principal starts with deposit it 575 dollars Open parentheses, what number goes here? It's always going to be the same number. That's your one. Plus um, our interest rate, which was 1.2%. Now, I know that this is already written as a decimal, but it's uh, it's a decimal. And it's still a percent. So you still have to move this. You got to get rid of your decimal. I mean, your you have to get rid of your percent sign. So now you're dealing with that so we're going to put 0 0.012 and what do we say quarterly was the problem i'm losing my screen uh quarterly so what did quarterly mean we're going to take a year and break it up into four parts and lastly it said over three years um so we can take our quarter that's how many times it's going to compound in one year over the three year time frame, giving us 12. So this is what I mean by knowing what, knowing the information. If you know what the, what like reading that again, if you know what you're reading and you know what words go where, you can easily set your problem up. And from here, again, just go ahead and knock it out. I'm gonna try to do this faster than I did last time. Let's see, don't time me though. And my phone locks every time I put it down. Thank you. And this phone is slow, man. So we're gonna do this part first. Right. That gives us 0 0.003 over four. And we can just go ahead and, oh no, not over four. We already did that over four. So that gives us that plus one. So now that's our new number. I'm gonna rewrite. I'm a bit. Y'all know I'm big on rewriting the problem after you solve certain parts. So go ahead and rewrite it. That looks like a hangman symbol, but that's a one. Go ahead and continue rewriting. Bring everything down. So the next part is taking that number here and. There we go. And writing it like so. Now, if you put this in a computer, I'm telling you, you'll it'll it'll go by quickly, but you just gotta make sure you get to where you're supposed to be getting. When I say that, get to your numbers that you're supposed to have. And this gives you, I'm gonna write this long number out again so you can kind of see why do I write the whole number out? Eh, just because I like to. Right? So you're going to take this number here and do what with it? Multiply it by that last part. I press 72. Huh. Let me clear that. 5, 7, 5. Now your answer, if you were only looking for the balance, was $596.00. And four cent, but that's not what they're asking you for. You have to be remember. I told you in this case it did not ask you for it did not ask you for the balance, it asked you for the interest that it gained. Now to find that out, we're going to take our balance balance minus our principal to give us 
our interest. And I'm going to rewrite this again so you can see something after I tell you this answer. So you take this 596. Um, let me just put that in. 596.04. Minus, and what was our? 5.75. And your answer here is $21.14. So over um, over our three years compounding uh, quarterly, this account would have made $21.04, right? So I'm gonna erase this and I'm gonna show you something uh, about I'm going to leave that down there because I need you to see it. And as usual, if you get lost somewhere, please rewind and watch this again so you can see, so you're not too lost. So when we did this, I told you to find the balance, you have to take your principal minus your interest to get your balance, right? Piv. Mr. Piv is a knockoff of Dr. Pepper. Uh, I'm just saying Anyway, so to do the other one, it's the same letters, the same letters, look, B, you're going to take your balance minus your principal to get your interest, okay? This is for simple, I'm going to put sim, and this is for compound, and I'm going to put comp, right? So I just need you to make sure that you know that like when you're solving for what does the I stand for? You should know by now. What does the B stand for? You should know by now. Okay? 